say at this point in my life that uh, my life is kind of just like a, a comedy of errors, of just things piling on top of each other in irony. And uh, so this happened a couple years ago when I was trying to, I don't know, make my room less bare and drab. And so I wanted to get some art to put on the walls and stuff. So I found this, this print of a picture. It's called Madonna of the Goldfinch. And I ordered this picture, and I was super excited about it because it's one of my favorite pictures. And uh, it, got, it got to here, I guess, and I opened it up, and it's, it's like giant. It's like four feet by two and a half feet. It's massive. And I didn't want to trim it down because I'd have to like cut out Jesus and that, that doesn't look good. Um, or I'd have to throw it away, which also doesn't, doesn't really look good. Um, so I, it's walled, it's on my wall. It takes up pretty much half the wall. And it's this picture of Jesus and Mary. Um, Jesus is this, uh, this small child and Mary is incredibly beautiful. Every time I see Mary in this image, I think of how profound the pose is that she has. It looks like she's almost indicating to Jesus to look at something, or she's about to point something out. I got the chance to see the original painting by Giovanni Battista Tipolo, and uh, it looks like she's almost about to cry in that original painting. And so whenever I see Mary in this picture, I'm like moved. Whenever I see Jesus in the picture, he, he looks so weird. He is not a normal baby child. And so now I have this picture on my wall that is massive of this baby Jesus that stares at me every time I come back to the friary. And it's, it's like pretty disturbing. Like his eyes are the eyes of an, an adult drawn on a child. It's kind of, it's just, oh, and his hair and his lips are odd. And, his body is elongated and stuff. It bothers me so much. And most people are like normal and say, well, then why did you put it on your wall? Well, number one, the plan wasn't to have it giant on my wall. And number two, it cuts me to my heart because it tells me something about myself when I look at Jesus and say something is weird about him. The whole idea that there's these adult eyes on a child was meant to indicate that He's divine. He doesn't fit in a human body like a normal human would. He doesn't relate as a normal human would to us. So of course we look at him when we're like, he's weird. But more than anything else, this picture shows me that it's probably me that's weird. It's my eyes that are distorted. It's me who looks at Jesus and says, there's something wrong with you. And this is what we do when we sin. This is what we do when we live our lives as however we want to ignore everything that, I don't know, wisdom tells us to do. This is where we fall short. It's a way of distorting our own vision so we can't see Christ as he is. And today in Lent is the symbol or the time, it's my favorite time of year because it's the day that I get to admit to myself that I am a broken disaster, so is the rest of the church, so is the rest of society, and I am still worth Jesus coming down to encounter. And this mass, oh, they cleaned it up, so it's kind of a bummer, but there's like ashes on the floor. There's ashes on our heads, there's ashes everywhere, and what are ashes worth? Absolutely nothing. They are the waste of palm branches things that have little use, burned so they're worth even less. And so when we sprinkle ashes on our heads, we're saying, this is kind of what I'm like. It's like I'm burned up and I can't see right. This is how it feels to be human right now. This is how it feels when I sin and fall short or can't achieve what I want to. And this is the day that Jesus looks at us and he says, oh, well, you're right. And this is the day that we turn our hearts to him and admit that. That's why in the first reading it says, rend your hearts, not your garments. When I hear rend your hearts, it means I'll oh, break the hardness inside of us. These ashes, admitting that we're fallen, admitting that we're broken, is us taking the hardness of our hearts 
and breaking it on Christ. Every Eucharist before we distribute communion, I have to break communion to give it to people. This is what Jesus does for us. He breaks himself on our brokenness. He breaks himself on our sinfulness, our disaster, our dumpster fire of a life. He just breaks himself on it. He looks weird for our weirdness. And this isn't just like some pie in the sky kind of thing. One of the things as Franciscans that we live is this word, this Greek word called metanoia. And it's conversion, and, but it's not just like, I don't know, changing my, my idea or thinking something new. It's more of like a transformation of how I exist in this world. It's a very transformation of the way I think my thoughts and not just the content. So in this Lent, we admit to ourselves that yes, we are weird. When it comes down to it, a lot of my actions, a lot of my life is just a bunch of ashes that in, I don't know, 100 years, no one's going to remember or care about. But that doesn't matter because the Lord is still with us. He takes on my weirdness so that I can become and see myself as more than that. And so we do this in our own hearts, we break ourselves on him, but we also do this for each other. What, what is keeping you from the people around you? What are the walls that you put up from being close to them? What are the untouchable areas in your friend's life that you refuse to go into? How can I take on other people's weirdness? How can I love others no matter where they're at? How can I break myself? In this Mass, in this Eucharist, in distributing these ashes, we don't smear them on our foreheads. Today we're going to sprinkle them on our heads. And this is a sign of what we are, what we take on, what we realize, what we recognize about ourselves. Yes, I fail. And yes, Jesus still loves me. One of the biggest things that I fear is that my darkness would become a caricature. And I don't want people to think that I'm just this depressing old guy that's, you know, falling apart and stuff, which I know I have the tendency to seem like. But the reason why I focus on darkness, the reason why I focus on sadness and the dark things, is because if Jesus is not there, then what's the point? If Jesus is only in the goodness, and really, what is the point? We have to go to the dark places so that we can see him there, because that is where he is more than anywhere else. So what are the dark places of your life? What are the ashes of your life? And I encourage you to bring them to the Lord and have him transform them.